my favorite holiday Barbie. Uh, thank you for asking. <sighs> Dream project because my absolute favorite Barbie. It is the 1998 holiday Barbie. So many memories of me and my sister playing with this doll and this was our favorite, favorite doll to play with. And I think it was special because my mom wouldn't let me play it with it for long because uh, so we would play with it for like maybe like 15 minutes and she always took it away right before we would like tear it apart or, or ruin the hair because my mom wanted the doll like to be like perfect still so when my nieces were getting into Barbies I had sent my sister my Barbie so her kiddos can play with them and I like the idea of my Barbies having a second life of you know being played with again and my one day my sister like calls me like super upset i was like well what happened and she um she just got a new puppy and tore it to pieces i'll put up a picture of what the aftermath looked like <laughs> uh she had bought a replacement doll for her kids and then she sent me this one as like i'm sorry <laughs> so this is my ultimate barbie dream sewing project i had this idea like months and months ago and then um when i initially had planned to post about it i had two days to make it and i was like really gung-ho thinking i could make it in that time like this whole outfit i was like yeah, i can do that in two days i'm filming this as i'm already completed with the outfit and spoiler alert i did not make it in two days but you're gonna see how really motivated i was to get it done <laughs> i still can't believe i was i don't know what i was thinking i was i felt like i was in a really good mood <laughs> i was extremely optimistic and just yeah <laughs> for the fabric i can see here that it's velvet and i bought six yards of velvet and I bought two yards of pink silk. I didn't use a pattern for any of this and I just kind of made it up as I went. And a lot of this was extremely new to me, like the crown, it's, uh, yeah. A lot of first in this video. Before we get started, thank you so much for all the new subscribers and likes and comments that I'm receiving. It means so much encouragement to keep going. So uh, I just love this creative uh, community that we've have together. <laughs> so I'm gonna take everything step by step and I uh, can't wait to show you the reveal. Okay to save time I'm going to use a blouse that I already have and that I already made. So I'm going to sew on some rhinestones that I bought on Amazon and I'll put up the link in the description where I purchased it. But I don't want to glue it I really want to use this blouse afterwards. <laughs> Check the source material. Her blouse she has these um, spread out sparkles, so I'm gonna use that for the rhinestones. And I bought a mesh blouse. Middle part, I'm gonna have like a, like a big belt, essentially, to strap in the back. And then <laughs> do this skirt, which I'm gonna mix in with um, sequins and sewing on the rhinestones. I might glue it because I don't see myself, you know, wanting to just drop the skirt it's gonna very much be like this <sighs> i pinned down roughly where i would want the rhinestones and i did this on my dress form that way i could see the rhinestones would be spread out and i poured out my rhinestones and i went to town hand sewing them down and this was actually the fastest part of the project so i really enjoyed it and if you're not already subscribed please subscribe i have so many vintage projects in store and even more barbie dresses to do <laughs> and that's what it looks like all done this is what it's looking like i originally thought i would just use the bigger gems but i kind of like the smaller rhinestones in between the larger ones this is the interior of the belt and i didn't use a pattern but all i did was use a bodice and didn't include the bust so this is the bottom half of a bodice and i added boning and i flipped that inside out and that way the velvet would be on top and then the inside would be purple i don't know why i chose purple that was just the scrap fabric that i had available now this is going to become this how do we make these little diamond shapes? 
luckily I had this huge amount of sequins. It's like it knew it was waiting for this project. So I started with the belt with the sequins. I did one side of horizontal lines. I pinned it so it wouldn't shift around and then I hot glued those in place. And then I start with the other side matching up the horizontal lines. So taking a little section from my pins and then hot gluing that down. That was a lot easier than having like one string to figure out and make sure it was straight. So pinning it down and then gluing down sections was very helpful and useful. At this point, I wasn't sure if I should also sew down the sequence because I wasn't totally convinced that the hot glue would hold down the sequence, but it did, so I just ended up hot gluing it. I gave up on sewing it, and that really saved me so much time. So the next day, I did a little tidying up, and then I worked on the circle skirt. The circle skirt, all I did was make the length 40 inches, and I did a regular circle skirt. I sewed the two sides together, then I draped it over my wheel so I could work a section at a time, gluing down the sequence on the skirt. I was really needing some motivation, so I put on my favorite Cinderella movie, Brandy. Cinderella is my all-time favorite version. I love this movie so much. Like, they're so perfect. Look at them. Now for the sequence. I noticed on the Barbie skirt, it's not just vertical lines of sequins, it's a breakup of sequins and in between the breakup of vertical lines there's a dot of sequins so I thought I would still have vertical lines of broken up sequins and then in between the broken up lines I would put a big rhinestone instead of a dot of sequins. I thought that would look more interesting and add a little bit more sparkle so that's what I did. I glued down vertical lines of sequins. I hot glued down the big rhinestone and that was one section. I had so much more to do. Look. There's my one little sequence. <laughs> so much to do, but I just kept going. I did a section at a time. I made it to when I was halfway done to admit that I wasn't going to have it in time and I gave up for that day but I really got so much done those two days. Thanks to my sister sending me pictures of the Barbie I wanted more details of the outfit and I didn't realize that like of course I need a petticoat <laughs> and uh, that's what's going to create that big voluminous skirt or else it's just going to drape down and uh, I want the skirt kind of you know flowy so i went downtown and downtown if you're in the la area they have a really big fabric district and i bought some really thick mesh fabric to make the petticoat and i was looking for pink but i couldn't find any so i bought five yards of this really thick mesh fabric i did buy this pink sheer fabric to go over the petticoat so i'm gonna have three layers the petticoat this sheer fabric and then the velvet sequence fabric so this is just going to be a barrier between the petticoat and the velvet so it doesn't get caught up when i walk i also want to just laugh at myself thinking that i could go i initially thought i could get this done in two days which is so crazy and like really like shameful honestly <laughs> so i have a little bit of the sequence to do of the skirt left over I'm gonna do the shawl, do the petticoat, and the crown, and then the sequins on the sleeves. Let's get back to work. I cut out a boomerang cashew shape for the shawl, and my boss let me know that I was doing a good job, so I went ahead and let that be the template for the black velvet fabric. And again, I made this up as I went along. I cut about three inches bigger than the template for the pink silk fabric because I thought I could ruffle down the pink silk to meet up with the black velvet so it could have that ruched effect she has in the picture so I zigzag stitched it down and ruffled it and I only wish that I made the two sides longer so it could hang over my shoulders easily so when I tried it on it was a little too short so if I were to do this again I would make the the two sides longer I added the black fabric 
and I sewed it down and um, yeah, that was it for the shawl. <laughs> so I made this little mini skirt and this is where I'm going to ruffle the mesh fabric so it could lay flat. Oh, hi peepers. I used a needle and thread to ruffle down the mesh fabric. I was afraid to put it through my sewing machine because I was down to my last needle. So I ruffled it by hand and then I attached it to the skirt while well, pinning it in place and then attaching it. I believe I bought five yards of the mesh and I really loved the volume it was giving and I did the same treatment to the sheer pink fabric. I hand ruffled it and then I attached it to the top of the silk of our petticoat and then I trimmed it and I left a hem it for it later. I wanted to document the last strip of sequins that I did on our skirt and whew, that is a lot of sequins. And then from there all I did was glue down the big chunk of rhinestones which it made it extra sparkly so so pretty if you can believe it we're almost done with this outfit so it's accessories time i used an old crown for my pinup pageant days and i thought i would glue on a strip of felt fabric over the already made crown and that made it a lot easier so i did a strip of scallop hems and i took me a really long time to get the fit right because I thought I was making it too big and it kind of looked like those birthday party paper hats. So I trimmed it down. I trimmed it so it was just slightly bigger than our original crown and I cut out some velvet fabric and I glued it onto the back of the felt. And I just like the belt, I did some lines of sequins and I crisscrossed the sequins and then I glued on some big ripe stones and I repurposed the original gem that was on the crown and I just put around five big sequins to add some extra sparkle to the crown. Same for the cuffs, I cut some felt fabric, I glued over velvet fabric, did some crisscross sequins, and then for the closures I used Velcro, I couldn't remember what it was called. You know how in most of the time in sewing, you get to, you're almost done, and then you run out of something, either thread, fabric, and then it's always just like that stressful, like extra bit that didn't, wasn't necessary, but it just always somehow happens. This is how much sequins I have left. Finished everything that I needed to and this is how much I have left. Like, And this is my last glue stick, which I don't even know how much I've used. I know I used like a full pack in like six extra long sticks. So I was blessed today. <laughs> Seriously guys, that never happens to me. So to finish up the shawl, I bought these uh, rope from Amazon and I like the thicker version so I um, sew that down to the ends of the shawl. And just for looksies, I took a trip down to Salvation Army to see if I could find some heels that would go with this outfit and I couldn't resist these shoes. They were so cute and it probably doesn't go with the outfit but I couldn't resist the sparkle and it was only $10 so I purchased them. Before getting ready, I had to take off all of those hot glue strings. So here's a little montage of me doing that. Also, I did do a separate tutorial of how I did the hair for this look, so if you haven't seen that, I'll put it up in a card. I got all ready and I could not fit in the car, so I had to be passenger princess and ride in the back as my love drove us to a nearby park. And I could finally show you guys the reveal.